This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Hello, you beautiful soul. Welcome back or welcome on into my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to satisfy my need for something creepy, epic, and gnarly. We are going to be making so I saw the movie Kong Island and I absolutely love this skull crawler and I was thinking what would that look like as a dragon? How cool and creepy would that look? I must do it. So that is what we were going to be making today. Now, gosh, some of you are going to say, excuse me, that is a wyvern, not a dragon. Now look, 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 look. I know, technically, this is a wyvern, but that is not a searchable term to the YouTube gods. Dragon is, so we are going to be saying it's a dragon, okay? Dragon. Dragon, dragon. Also subscribe. Okay, let's get started. So the first step is going to be sculpting the head. And now as it is kind of the usual on my channel these days, I am going to be 3D sculpting the head and I am using ZBrush. 3D sculpting has just really kept it nice and fresh for me since I've been, like I said in my previous video, I've been doing sculpture for almost 10 years. And so dabbling now into 3D sculpt is, it's similar but different at the same time and I have to learn a lot of new things and a lot of new techniques and it's, it's refreshing for me but I'm also like learning a whole lot and so it's also difficult because I'm just like what am I doing? I don't know. What does this button do? Oh no I broke it! How do I fix it? It's just a whole lot of that but I enjoy that kind of process because again, it's keeping it fresh for me. It's engaging me all over again and I'm falling back in love with just sculpting in general. But for this guy, it also helps me be incredibly detailed, which is what I wanted for him. He is a gnarly, snarly, grumpy boy and I just wanted him to look creepy and detailed with muscles and, and like weird alien looking textures and stuff. I just, I wanted him to look creepy and I think 3D sculpting really helped me nail that. It also helps me with the mechanics of art dolls. I wanted this guy to have a poseable jaw. And while I could do this with clay and it's entirely possible, I've done it in previous videos, having it in a 3D space using a computer just helps me to be way more accurate on the cutouts I want, how I want the mechanics to work, helping plan it out. It just makes that part of figuring things out way easier. I can also reuse things I've previously sculpted. Like these horns here are just Grimm's horns, but retextured to look more specky. And after all this is done and I'm happy with the sculpt, it is time to take it on over to the 3D printer.
from the computer to my hands, here is Spiky Nami Boy. Now, I realized pretty quickly it would probably make sense and it would be a big brain move if I painted the inside of his mouth first before I attach it to an armature. So that is what I'm doing here. I wanted not like a lovely pink, like I wanted it to be kind of vibrant, but I didn't want like a neon pink cutie pink. So I kind of like diluted it with more purple to make it more of like a vi violetly color. <laughs> Sounds like I'm saying violetly, violetly. Violently is not a word. Violently is a word, but violently, I don't think is a word. I'm rambling. Now back to what I was doing. Once I'm done with the violently colors, I went and added some bone white on the snazzy teethums. Now, I was particularly proud of myself that I didn't get the white literally everywhere else but the teeth. Like, I got it pretty much just on the teeth. Go me. And that has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I wasn't breathing at all and panicking the entire time. Once all the painting was done, I decided to coat the inside of the mouth with UV resin. I thought this would be the ultimate way to protect the paint from, because it, it, essentially the teeth are going to be sliding against each other as the mouth opens and closes, and I wanted to negate that as much as possible. But also, it gave a very slimy, wet look to the inside of his mouth, which is perfect for a snarly, creepy boy. So I was very, very pleased with this. And look at that tongue, it's so shiny. I love it. And here is the joint completed. I'm actually really happy with the range of motion he has. He can open his jaw pretty wide. And now it is ASMR armature time. To attach the foot to the armature, I just filled the cavity with hot glue and inserted the armature and held it until it cooled, locking it in place. Now, I did have every intention of showing you guys how I made the armature for the wings, but I grossly underestimated the size of this behemoth. I know it's hard to see and like gauge on screen, but he is a whopping three feet or one meter long and his wings are five feet or one and a half meters long. So, uh, I'm sorry. I took it off screen because it was a battle and I was smacking literally everything off of my table. While I struggle with the armature, let's take a second to talk about this video sponsor, Squarespace. So I've been wanting to update my website for a while and luckily little tech support knew just how to help me. Not that I really needed his help because with Squarespace it's super easy to get started. Squarespace has a built-in e-commerce where you can offer physical and digital items so I can sell my art dolls, track inventory, make labels, and give customer support all in one spot. And a small detail I really appreciate is their image scaling and cropping options, so I don't have to worry about photos getting cut off and having things look weird like this. They also have great portfolio designs, and this really helps me to show off the varieties of my work both new and old. So if any of this interests you, head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash kpcreations to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you once again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Once I won the battle, it was time to build up the body, and for that I use quilt batting, and quilt batting just comes in these very long sheets because they're, you know, made for quilts, and I'll cut it into strips and just wrap it around the body over and over until it's built up to how I want, making sure not to build up too thick because whatever fabric I'm going to add on top of that is going to add additional thickness. But that actually doesn't really apply in this particular case because the fabric is so thin, I kind of have to make sure that the body is built up to how I want and how thick I want the end result because otherwise he's going to be a thin boy. But like I always say, I always say, if you want chunk, chunk, chunk boy, you go and you get chunk, chunk chunk boy if you want thin 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 boy you go and you get thin 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 boy okay we support all body shapes and sizes here i did like a whole little dance <laughs> i love it <laughs> I always say I am not the channel to come to for competent sewing advice because half the time I'm just winging it and I have actually no idea what I'm doing and somehow that's amplified even worse the bigger the art doll gets because because he's so big and I just have to wrestle him in every step of the way. Cutting the fabric for him was a trip. Measuring it against his body was a trip. So I'm just showing you some lovely shots. I'm not going to go too much into it this time. I'm very sorry. If you would like to see 
how I actually probably sew things, I would highly recommend checking some of my older videos where I'm making things smaller and I can actually show everything I'm doing because with him, I could barely get the boy in frame half the time. <laughs> I'm mostly just complaining. I'm just here to complain about his size because I tried, guys. I tried so hard. I was like, okay, we're going to print his head this small and you know it's gonna make it so his body's not that big and then it came out and I was like you know what that is actually not that big okay and then I had to make a body that matched his head size so it would make sense and then I sat back and looked and I said wait a minute <laughs> wait why is he so big no 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 wait 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 he's he's like two feet shy of the air dragon but his wings are as long as the air dragon across i just oh i need some help i need to learn the definition of big and small because clearly i don't know it because this dragon will mostly be supporting his weight on his wings i know it's a wyvern don't come for me in the comments okay but we're calling it a dragon just just be okay with it i want to make sure that i make a big enough thumb that would support that weight and make it sure that it's not going to slide around everywhere because the wire itself would and for that i'm using instamorph and instamorph just comes in these little plastic pellets and you put it in very very hot water so please be careful if you use it and then you can mold it once it turns clear and then when it cools off it is a nice hard plastic again and i love this stuff for simple things like these claws and such they're just perfect because i don't have to wait for anything to bake i'm gonna wait for none to cure just wait for it to cool down which don't take very long and you're good to go now it is time to tackle these big boys which thankfully the process is the exact same as every other bat and dragon wing i've ever done it's just on a much bigger scale now i make sure to spread the wing out as far as i want it to be able to pose because once i add this fabric it is going to restrict it to that limit and then i will trace out the general shape of the wing cut it out and then i'll fold over a little bit of the fabric over the wire and just kind of sew back and forth. Uh, again, this is why sewing is so hard for me to explain because I don't think that made any sense, but I hope the footage makes a little bit more sense with what I'm doing. As you can see here, folding the little fabric over that wire so it kind of makes the first finger and it goes down into the elbow and the joints for all the little wingy bits. <laughs> we'll find it best. Now, I only needed to sew for the main finger and the forearm because that is where the majority of the weight is going to be supported. But for the other fingers, I didn't have to worry nearly as much because hardly any weight is going to be put on them. So all I do is I put a line of glue over the wire and then I kind of sandwich the fabric over it and holding it until it cools off. It hardly ever shows and even if it does, I just kind of trim it off so that it doesn't show. I've never had any issues with this. It never comes undone and it just makes it really quick and easy to get the rest of the wing done and then after that I will trim the wing shape out I will do a blunt cut first and then just kind of come back and refine it to make sure it's the wing shape that I want I also went and kind of tattered up the edges because I didn't want them to be such a clean line Oh my god, there's just more and more sewing on this boy, but hopefully this is the last bit I have to do. I have to attach the wing to the body, and for that I just used a whip stitch. I'm doing my very best! Now when I was making the finger thumbs, I also made a bunch of little spikes for him. But for continuity's sake, it made more sense to put that clip here. And I made them in all varying shapes and sizes, the very, the more gnarly and creepy look I thought it would give. Thank you to editor Sarah for braving the storm that is painting 150 little spikes. I appreciate you. And now it is time to add those little spikes everywhere that I fell fit. Fell fit. Felt, felt fit. Put them anywhere I wanted. And I started with the tail because I really wanted him to have a spiky boy tail that he could just smack all his enemies with. Like, get out of my way. <laughs> but I also put them all over his back. I really wanted them there just to add a bit more visual interest and to be a different color. I know a skull crawler is just white and black and his head is the only thing that is white, but I just wanted a little bit more variance and I thought these spikes would be the perfect touch for that. And they just look really, really cool and you don't you don't wanna to touch them, they're very pointy. Staying as close to the skull crawler as I can, I base the entire head in a bone white.
With a lot of back and forth, I then faded that bone white to black to kind of fade a little bit better into the body. The horns get a desaturated brown because again, I was trying to add any color just to add a little bit more visual interest. And then it was time for washes. And I just took a really, this was a little bit too vibrant. I go back in with a more desaturated dark brown and I just put a wash all over the face and then dab off all the excess with a paper towel. So it gets into all the recesses and shows off all those details that we sculpted in ZBrush earlier. And then I go over that just to make sure that those details really pop with that blown white again, just to make sure that they're all nicely highlighted. The final steps, we cannot forget to paint his little thumb and feet nice and black. And then I go over those with another dry brush just to make sure that all their details pop. And with the final strokes of paint, this bad boy is done. And we can look at the final montage. <laughs> 